It took 18 days more to engulf the Belgians and drive the Anglo-French army into the sea. The French and British armies had moved to the aid of the Belgians, but wars are not won by improvisations, and in their desire for neutrality, the Belgian and Dutch governments had failed to perfect joint defense with the Allies before the Nazis struck. The invaders rolled on. This was the Belgian cathedral city of Louvain, scarred in the First World War and restored anew, and again it fell victim to the invaders. Again its inhabitants took to the roads to escape the pursuing fires. cathedral crashed in flames. The invaders rolled on. Morning found the refugees still fleeing blindly. Reputable observers said these refugees were machine gunned from the air. There is no photographic evidence of this. And this is what they fled. The Nazi machine moved on and after a day's destruction, paused only to sleep. This was Antwerp where the democracies had fired oil tanks as their armies retreated. Brussels was spared, for it had been declared an open city, and the Nazis marched in, meeting no resistance. Belgium was doomed, and King Leopold capitulated. The improvised Allied defense collapsed. The British Army was driven into the Sea of Dunkirk, according to plan. 
Dunkirk has been called the triumph of man over the machine. To challenge the dive bombers, Spitfires rose from British bases and fought for the domination of the air over the desolate beach, while ground forces continued a stubborn rear guard action. British ships, cruisers, destroyers, yachts, paddle boats, anything that could float, crossed the channel and evacuated some 350,000 British and French troops back to England. For the British were determined to save their men. was the story of the epic evacuation. Men walked into the sea and swam to their rescuers. They couldn't take their weapons, trucks, tanks or guns, but men were saved to fight again. <laughs> 